Let's talk about the movement of gases. And to do that, let's recall um, simple diffusion. So we know with simple diffusion uh, that particles want to move from the area of high concentration to low concentration. So here I'm drawing some purple particles in the extracellular fluid and inside of the cell. So I can see there's a higher concentration in the extracellular fluid. There's a lower concentration of particles in the cell. And so according to the laws of diffusion, particles want to move from their area of high concentration into their area of low concentration. They will move. Uh, and the only question would be, is can they move? Are the particles permeable? And so particles move passively down their concentration gradient, and we know this. Gases move in the same way. Gases move in a very similar way. They always move passively, uh, except they move down a pressure gradient. And so if we take a look at this scenario, let's say that inside of the lung um, that there is a high oxygen pressure and that inside of the blood uh, servicing that alveolus there is a lower oxygen pressure then according to the laws of diffusion what will happen is oxygen will move from its area of high pressure into its area of low pressure passively but again you know that question exists is it permeable and so let me um, say that oxygen and carbon dioxide are both lipid soluble so they'll be able to cross uh, plasma membranes down their uh, pressure gradients just as long as their that barrier is thin enough for them to cross it and so this is how gas exchange occurs or if we look at um, another example if carbon dioxide was at a higher pressure in the blood then in the alveolus, which is what we expect because we keep exhaling and keep that CO2 level down, then CO2 will passively move from its area of high pressure into its area of lower pressure. So this example is in a bit of a micro environment, right? Because we're looking at an alveolus and its blood supply. But still we see that when you look at the movement of a gas, that gases also move passively just down their pressure gradients. And so this is true on a micro level, and it's also true on a more macro level. So taking a look at this picture, I wanted to talk about breathing for a minute. With breathing, what we do is we move air in and out of the conducting airway, right? Inhalation and exhalation. The pressure of the air outside of our body in our environment is called the atmospheric pressure, and the pressure filling our airway, filling that conducting airway, and inside of the lungs sp specifically, is what we're looking at now. That's called the intrapulmonary pressure, the pressure inside of the lungs. So if the atmospheric pressure was higher than the intrapulmonary pressure, which way do you think gas will move? Hopefully you're thinking that gas is going to move from the area of high, move through the conducting passageways, into the area of low, right? That's inhalation. Inhalation depends on this pressure gradient. In order to have inhalation, you must have a pressure gradient. Pressure gradients move gases. Gas will move from the area of high pressure outside of our body into the area of low pressure inside of our lungs. And the same is true for exhalation. It's just passive. So what do you think would happen if our intrapulmonary pressure, if the air pressure inside of our lungs was higher than the atmospheric pressure? And the atmospheric pressure was lower. Hopefully you're thinking that passively gases would move from the lungs out into the atmosphere. They would move from the area of high pressure into the area of low pressure. And that's the basic explanation for inhalation and exhalation, that gases are just passively moving from an area of high pressure into an area of low pressure.